Hi everyone, so in this video I wanted to kind of quickly show you my process for coloring uh, digitally because a, a lot of people have been asking for my brush settings and basically like my, my process or the steps I take when I color. I'm going to show you very simply, hopefully it's simple, the ways that I color. I'm just going to start off with a, with a base color for the background. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I'm going to do a really really simple sketch to show you. Um, what should this be? Should this be like some kind of fish? Okay, here's a very, very simple drawing of a fish, just so I can show you my coloring process. Maybe I'll pull up an example. Okay, here's my new profile picture, it's just loading. This kind of coloring, I'm going to show you my process for that. I tried to film this video many times and my sound recorder kept turning off and corrupting the file, so I'm using my camera's audio, so I'm sorry if it sounds weird and if you can hear my computer fan super loud. Actually that would have happened anyway because this computer fan is just really loud. So here's the sketch. I always start with a sketch. And the first thing I do is I like to mask off whatever I'm coloring. So I'll either use the lasso tool, I'll select around it, like this. Go to select, dilate selection, or just like increase your selection a little bit, and then invert your selection. Before I go any further, um, I'm using Paint Tool Psi 2, which is very similar to Paint Tool Psi 1, and I have a whole tutorial about it and I'll link it above, but whatever you're using is fine. And now I'm going to decide on a color for this fish. Let's make him a blue fish. I like to fill things with, um, like I like to start with a mid-tone, because it's just easier to shade with a mid-tone. So this is basically your your base layer for coloring. And in order to to shade, I feel like fish is my go-to animal whenever I, I'm doing a tutorial, but that's because they're just quick and easy to draw. So this is your layer for coloring. In order to color on this layer, you can either preserve the opacity or make a new layer on top and clip it so that whenever you clip it, whatever you draw will not go outside of that. And the same thing happens when you preserve the opacity, but the difference is is that it stays on this base layer, but when you clip layers, they're their own separate layers. I'm just gonna color on the same layer. The brush I use, and here's my brush settings. There's no texture, I'm not gonna open that. Miscellaneous, I'm pretty sure is just at the default. And the brush settings are a little bit different for Paint Tool Psy, for, for Paint Tool Psy 2, but they're pretty much the same as just Psy 1. So the brush settings I use, I keep the blending at zero, the dilution at zero, and the persistence at 24. And the settings, I, I always leave those the same. I just use the normal standard brush tool. And the settings that I change is actually the opacity or the density down here. And I like to keep them around this level, especially when I'm just blocking in color. But the more detail you want, the I make it more and more dense for more detail. But when I'm just blocking in the simple colors, I leave it like this. I'm going to change the background color, actually. Less saturation, maybe. Yeah. I think that might actually just look the same. So I'm going to start adding in the colors of the fish. I decided I want to make part of him orange. That's too bright. I start with the mid-tones, just quickly block stuff in. His eye can be kind of white-ish, that's a little too light. And now that he, this is very, very quick and fast, but if you're doing your own drawing, it'll, it's going to take you longer than this. So I'm going to choose a darker color. Oh, another thing I do is I make the sketch layer on multiply, and that just kind of makes it pop. It makes the sketch appear darker on whatever is below it. You can also clip a layer to it and change the color of the sketch to be whatever you want. So I'm going to leave it at, as this nice pink color. So now I'm still on the same color layer. I'm gonna start adding in the shading and in order to do this I use the eyedrop tool a lot so I will eyedrop the in-between colors and paint with those two. I'm gonna say the lighting is coming from above and to the right a little bit. I'm gonna add some highlights to him. I'm gonna add some lighter colors to the fins. I'm just using the same brush for everything. And using this brush, it just gives it a nice soft feel, gives everything 
this like painterly kind of look to it. The more I stare at this fish, the creepier it looks. And since this fin is kind of farther away, I'm not going to make it as bright as the other fin, so it kind of hangs back a little bit. This is just um, blocking in the colors, so it doesn't have to be perfect at this stage. And what I do after I'm done blocking in the colors, um, usually my sketch is quite a bit more messy than this. But this is, yeah, this is a lot cleaner than usual. But I will make a layer on top of everything. I'll increase my density a little bit, I think. Or maybe I'll leave it the same. And then I start to paint over top of things. And this is when I, this is when I use the eyedropper tool a lot to kind of pick colors up. And this is where all the cleaning up comes in. So I will select this color, paint with it a little bit. Select that color, clean this line up. And I just keep going cleaning, cleaning everything up, blending things out, adding details. Um, this is when everything happens. And it's all on its own layer above everything. Sometimes I'll even use the background color, but if you use the background color to clean up edges, make sure you remember that you did that because then you can't change the background color because you have painted over top of it, if that makes sense. So you'll have to erase those parts if you ever want to separate this from the background. But I will sometimes eye drop the background color, especially if it's just a sketch or if I know I'm going to keep the color the same. And that's kind of my process. I use the eyedropper tool to clean things up once I do all my base colors underneath the sketch and then over top of the sketch on everything, that's when I clean everything up with the eyedrop tool. And that's what gives everything kind of this like painterly sort of look to it. And it's nice to incorporate colors from around the drawing to kind of unify it. So I'm adding a little bit of orange down here. It just takes um, some practice to get a feel for like where where you put the colors and when you eye drop, how often, um, how the brush works for you. It does take a bit of practice, but I wanted to show you my process because a lot of people have been asking um, what my steps are for digital art. So I wanted to, to show you my steps because I think it's a fairly straightforward process and once I once I kind of let myself be messy and let myself paint over top of everything and not care about staying inside lines and kind of like repainting the lines as I as I see fit um, that's when I started to really um, find my own painting style for digital art and I, I'm not saying it's unique but like I found a method that works for me and that's what I really like about this and since it's a fish I might add a bit of a scale texture to it and you can add as much detail as you want depending on your style but I'm gonna do little little cartoony scales on him to make him look more like a fish he's a very very happy fish he's smiling very wide <laughs> I want to get more of this orange down here I really hope you got something from this simple little video. I wanted to show my coloring process, and this is a method I use for pretty much everything in my digital art. It's really fun, it's really easy to do. Um, well, I can't, it's easy for me obviously because I've been doing it for a long time, but it's not too, it's not too complicated. I use the same brush for everything. And I already showed you my brush settings, but maybe I'll put a little screenshot on the, on the screen so you can see. Um, I really hope this helped you out somehow if you're looking for different coloring techniques for your digital art, and I'll see you in my next video.